Welcome to Pod Planet, a place where things happen that may sound unbelievable, strange, incredible. If you've ever wondered if you were weird or strange or the odd man out, these stories will restore your belief that there are indeed people out there who are weirder, stranger, and odder than you ever imagined. Perhaps you'll find some comfort in that. Bear in mind, every story from Pod Planet is between 83 and 100% true. These are stories we have experienced, survived, and lived to tell about. Let us begin. Pod Planet presents Strangers on a Train. My mother Nancy and her friend and neighbor Roby Kessler often traveled together. They were both in their late 60s and had time to explore the world. Asia, South America, the Cotswolds in England. Nancy and Roby had been to Europe together fairly often, but one of those trips stands out amongst the others. On this particular journey, they'd flown to Berlin, and after they'd explored Berlin and Hamburg and Copenhagen, They boarded a train to Zurich. Nancy and Roby were seated in a glassed-in first-class compartment and were eventually joined by a well-dressed, older German woman. There was a communication barrier. Nancy and Roby both spoke very little German and the German lady spoke very little English. But through a combination of mangling each other's languages, along with hand gestures and photo sharing, they became friendly. As it turned out, The German lady, seated next to my mother Nancy, was going to Switzerland to see her daughter and grandchildren. The train gently rocked as it made its way through the Alps to Zurich. After a lull in the conversation, the German lady, seated next to my mother, appeared to have fallen asleep and began leaning into my mother. My mother, always trying to be polite and cordial, tried to scoot over on the train seat to give the sleeping German lady a little more room. But the German woman simply leaned further against my mother. Then, as the train descended the southern side of the Alps, the German lady's dentures slipped out of her mouth and onto her lap. My mother and Roby exchanged glances. My mother asked Roby if she thought it would be proper to put the sleeping German woman's dentures back into her mouth. Roby paused. Then, in an unusual show of sensibility, she leaned across the compartment and checked the woman's pulse. I wouldn't put the teeth back in her mouth, Nancy, Roby quietly said. The woman's dead. The train began to slow down as it approached the Zurich station. At this point, my mother got out a clean handkerchief and hygienically lifted the dentures from the German lady's lap. Then, Roby tilted the freshly deceased German woman away from my mother and covered her with a blanket from the overhead compartment. Next, Nancy and Roby devised a plan. A kind-hearted, batshit crazy plan. But still, they had a plan. Roby. Roby would look for a conductor to help with the situation and assist with the luggage. Okay. That part made sense. In the meanwhile, Nancy was aware the German woman's family would be somewhere on the platform waiting for the arrival of their grandmother. So my mother Nancy gathered up the woman's dentures in her handkerchief. Then she walked around the Zurich arrivals platform with her white hanky displaying the teeth of a dead woman to people at the train station. My mother's part of the plan centered around finding a family who could identify a deceased German woman solely on the basis of the appearance of her dentures. As the passengers exited the train and the crowd began to thin out, there was still one family who appeared to be waiting for someone to disembark. At about the same time, Roby appeared on the platform with a trilingual conductor who was carrying Nancy and Roby's luggage. The conductor set the suitcases down. Then he gently took the dentures and the hanky from my mother's hands and somberly spoke to the family on the platform. The German woman's daughter began softly sobbing. 
The conductor tried to comfort her and handed the dentures and the handkerchief to the daughter's husband. Nancy and Roby thought this might be a good time to give the family some privacy and departed the train platform to hail a taxi. They checked into their cozy Swiss hotel. Then they went directly to the lobby bar, but not before a quick detour to the hotel gift shop so Nancy could buy a replacement hanky. So, let this be a cautionary tale to all of us. Seek adventure. Find new experiences. Travel to wherever the four winds take you. But wherever you go, just make sure you have a travel hanky close at hand. Because you never know when you'll end up sharing your train compartment with a dead German woman. You've been listening to Pod Planet Season 1. Pod Planet is written and produced by Peter McHugh and Clive Desmond. Audio and digital support for Pod Planet comes from Oliver Wickham and Aidan Vickery, two of the best and brightest young minds in audio today. Theme music for Pod Planet Season 1 was composed and produced by Richard Suddy, aka Telegraphy, from Detroit. Look for Telegraphy's FMA link in the credits section of our webpage. Richard Suddy is an amazing artist and you'll want to hear more telegraphy. Every Pod Planet episode contains some fantastic original music, much of which is courtesy FMA. If you'd like to hear or know more about the composers from this or any episode of Pod Planet, look for their links in the episode credits section of our webpage. These musicians are amazing and you'll want to take a listen to their work. And special thanks again to FMA.org. And if you haven't subscribed to Pod Planet yet, subscribe now. Go to our webpage, podplanet.org, podplanet's one word, and click on subscribe or hit follow on whatever podcatcher app you're using. You'll find Pod Planet on Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, iTunes, Lipson, YouTube, and many others. And follow Pod Planet on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Links on our webpage. Pod Planet is part of PRX, the Public Radio Exchange. So if you're a radio station that would like to add Pod Planet to your schedule, look us up at prx.org. PRX can set it all up. We love to hear from listeners, so please leave your thoughts or questions in the comment section on our webpage. And be sure to recommend Pod Planet to your friends. Send them our link, podplanet.org. Pod Planet would like to thank Lydia, Lola, and Tattoo Sound and Music in Toronto, as well as extra special thanks to Monique Kelly for her guidance, insight, and never ending support. This is Pod Planet Season 1. We'll be back in two weeks with a new and startling episode. Until then, on behalf of Peter McHugh and the whole Pod Planet team, thanks for listening. I'm Clive Desmond. <laughs> <laughs>